going down the drain. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Why should you want to know? Don't you mind about the future? And now, for your listening pleasure, streaming live from Big Johnson Studios, it's the Ledge Radio Show with media entertainment phenom JD. Thanks to executive producer Tripod Billy. We are streaming live video on Ustream. Search the Ledge Radio Show and you will find us. You can follow us also on Facebook and listen on iTunes as well. Big thanks to our short bus special co-host, Milton Paul. Hello. <laughs> uh, Paul, a uh, lot of stuff in the uh, in the news this week. You know, there's been there's never been a shortcoming of news since obama's been elected no, it's like every day that there's some kind of news story some kind of scandal and of course he never knows anything about anything right yeah he's never been informed wasn't aware of it wasn't his department wasn't me i didn't know buck doesn't stop with him above buck, my pay grade yeah buck stops somewhere else well you know this isn't something uh directly related to him per se um although i had any other president been in office at the time um, this would not even be an issue or a story uh, because, you know, and as and as much, I don't know, political BS goes around when it you know comes to unions. Um, you know, we always, I think every week we probably have one little story on uh, something to do with unions, whether it's uh, you know a different state you know, opting out or um, you know some plant opting out of the union. Uh, this was, um, I think, good news for folks like you and I. Who are completely and bad news for folks like Brian? Yeah, completely. You know, <laughs> folks like us that are completely anti-union in all regard for all businesses in for the United States, all, everything, private and public. Yeah, I mean, I, I like you. I don't think unions have a place anymore. Nope. I think that there's you know 23 additional new government agencies that have been created to take the place of unions now. So you've got the union to bargain for the workers that bargains for everything from pay to benefits holidays you know whatever it is they're they're right. you know they, i no, guess they, they, they're such pussies pussies they can't get together they, they're, they're so afraid to come to their boss by themselves and actually have a one-on-one conversation right. and say boss you know i've been killing myself here and I, I could really use a raise they can't do that no they got to go to the union rep you know living out in the in, in a mansion and say hey you know I need a raise. And you know what? The funny thing is, JD, a lot of the guys that I know that are in unions, you know, they, they, they tell me on a regular basis that, hey, you know, when I have a claim and I go to my union rep, they're not, they don't want to help me. And then if union rep tells you, I'm not going to help you, You're what screwed. do you do? You're screwed. You, if union rep tells you no, it's no. Right. You've got no, you've got no recourse and you got to keep paying your dues or, or. You know, or, or you may lose your job depending you on your job. what what state you're in. Now, if you're in the state of Florida, you know we're a right to work state, so you do not. It's not a requirement. Yeah, do your, of your job, job, or uh, there's the door. Right. You know, and that's the way it should it be. Should be. And I think that you and I have said it before. Unions were were typically started to protect be- the workers, and like like. But now we got so many. As you said, we've got so many government agencies now. That we OSHA. Don't, OSHA. You know, uh, la- labor board. Labor board. I mean. You you name it, it's out there that, right. that that was created in unison with the unions. You know, unions were like you said, protect the worker. Yeah, I. E. They did for many years. Yeah, with an example and we being the unions for their time, but they need to go bye bye now. You know, child labor laws. I mean, sure, back in the early you know early days of this country, you know, when there weren't as many regulations in place, which thank God, I wish we we could go back to a lot of those times. You know, yes, the worker could be subjected to some very unfair treatment, and. If it wasn't, uh, maybe, maybe they didn't need unions, but uh, unions did help get through a lot of that, right. a lot of that, uh, you know, BS back then, and, and got the employers on track. But I think a lot of that would have cycled out anyway, because in a capitalist society, the worker can decide: Do I want to work for this guy who's treating me like this, or do I want to go to another employer, or do I want to go somewhere else? You know what, I got a good suggestion. Let's let's take all these unions and let's ship them to China. Because over there, they need union representation. <laughs> they they so do. I suggest the UAW, 
the, all the other public, you know, firefighter cops and all these other unions, ship them to China and let them represent the Chinese workers. Because us here in America... Well, you know, <laughs> you know what will happen over there? The Chinese government would be like Tiananmen Square again. They're going to drive over them with tanks. Exactly. I know? mean, the unions aren't going to... they got no place up to go. I mean, yeah. the unions are a dying... They're a dinosaur. It's a dying and, breed. And even, even liberal media is coming out saying, this, set, this speaks volumes. They had years at the Volkswagen UAW for UAW. They welcomed them into the plant. Management was on their side, and they still lost you're, by almost 100 votes. You're talking about up in Tennessee. And yeah, that, that yeah was the a, UAW st- story that we're going to get into now. Yeah, that was the story I was referring to, and then I appreciate you pointing that out to me earlier this week. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, employees at the Volkswagen plant in Tennessee uh, have rejected joining the UAW in a uh, what's – stated as a major defeat for organized labor in the South. Now, that in itself, I don't know how big that is because the South, like this article states, um, is not typically uh, union-friendly. Overall, the South has been more you know, for the individual. The individual makes up his own decision. The individual can go to his boss and, and you know voice his opinion to his boss, whereas more notoriously you, you'll find the Northeast – you know, your New York, you know, Massachusetts, Maryland, those states where you got a bunch of pussies up there that can't work as an individual. They get forced into these unions, you know, but we still have the, uh, the you know, the public unions down here where your, your uh, government employees, uh, they're all in unions because, I mean, okay, they, they work for the government. They have great benefits. They have, you know, really good pay these days. So obviously they need a union to help them get even better pay and better benefits when already their pay and benefits typically out you know outpaces the private sector in the area but i think it i think it's a good uh it was a good step um it, you know clear vote 712 to 626 uh to stay out of the union but but really paul a lot of folks in that plant voted for the union yeah a, a, a large amount did 626 right so a large amount of people are for the union but it wasn't enough I mean, right uh, you know well let me ask you this you think if they've had this vote next year because, you know, the union's not going to go away. Just because they lost this year doesn't mean they can't come back next year and reintroduce it and, and try to do it again. You know, what would stop them from voting for it no, again next year? I, I Personally, I don't believe that they're going to they're gonna win next year either because of the Obamacare bill. And when they realize how much the premiums have gone up and then there's no union exemption, the, you know, they're not going to vote for it. It's not going to happen. Well, now that is the true. Economy. You did mention that that's something you hit on there that – the unions thought they were going to have these big exemptions, which and they're not getting them right. Uh, I don't know if that's something that Obama just decided uh, on his own to turn against them, or if he realized he couldn't get it through, or that he needed their money to pay for Obamacare, so he couldn't grant the, the subsidies that the unions were going to get, or talk shows like this one, conservative talk radio, which has the largest voice in this country. Liberal shows don't work. You know, they don't have ratings, but conservative talk shows do. So we get the word out to spread the truth about things like this. And I think that when you've got a large percentage of the population listening to the truth and they hear things like this, they hear us tell, you know, other other folks that Obama was going to cut a sweet deal with the unions to subsidize their health plans but not everyone else's. I mean, let me ask you, why Why would that be? Why would Obama give the unions a great deal? What's the benefit for him? Well, the benefit for him is is their support, their vote, uh, their so, money. So you're saying he's, he bribed them? He bribed them, exactly. Flat out bribe. It's a bribe. I mean, and we already know 99% of, of unions, their money collected from Goes dues the Democratic Party. when they when they have to send it on to a lobbyist or to directly to politicians, like you said, it goes to the Democrat Party. So they're going to support their guy. He's got to pay them back, you know. So he paid them back. Was going to pay them back with their big subsidies, and I guess he went you know, went back against his word on it. So now they don't. Now the unions are now coming out against Obamacare in you know large droves um i don't know if i've seen like uh you know richard trumka you know coming out against him because he's you know he's he's a a buddy of obama's you know personal friend goes to the white house all the time but um 
I don't know. I, I like this. I wish we'd see more of this. I don't know if you. I don't know if these stories exist out there and they just don't get reported on. Um, I mean, because even in my business, my small little business here, okay, at the, at the studio, I had union um, management approach me and ask me if I thought that union labor would help us. Well, the way you treat your employees, I don't doubt it that they came in, you know. No, <laughs> employees. One slaves, square I toilet mean, paper per employee. If they're lucky. Signs all over the bathroom wall. Yeah. Flush now. Yeah. Watch leave for leaking water. The toilet. Close refrigerator. Turn off light. I mean, no, but I mean, no, but seriously, they, they approached me and asked me what I, you know, if, if I thought I could use union labor, and I said, why would I want to slow down production? Exactly. You're giving me a bunch of lazy guys. They're going to stand around watching the real guys work. Right, and raise your prices. And and then of course, you know, then then my own employees would lobby against me to have me mandatorily raise their their pay when the company can't afford it so then when the pay gets so high that the company isn't sustainable then we got to close the doors how did that how did that benefit the employees that sounds like hostess and many other companies well really though it you is. know when it's, when it's you true. When, it's it's a dying breed when, when, when no you need when you for it. when you have to close your company because you can no the, longer pay the salaries and the benefits and the pensions. The union bargained you out of a job. Exactly. What's the benefit for them? Now they can get free Obamacare? Is that the benefit? Yeah, uh, just like city and county and state, you know, employees, you know, they're getting all these great benefits after retirement that we can't afford to pay for anymore. You know, it's 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 gotten out of control. You well, know, in a, lot a of downward times, spiral. You know, and a lot of times those those you know, and and you know the argument you'll get back from union uh, members is well that was a contract. Well, yeah. Well, that unfor- was a deal when they hired us. They have to stick to it. They have yeah, to no, do ma- it. yeah. Even if they can't afford it, they got to stick to they it. They got to do it. They have to. That, that's clearly it. Comes from a person that's never had to do a budget ever. Yeah. Okay. That was a contract you signed with us. You told me I would have retirement till the day I died. Well, unfortunately, Johnny, um, we don't changed. we don't have that money anymore. We thought we were going to at the based on the rate of growth at the time, but the economy tanked. We don't have that rate of growth, so we can't continue to pay that without the city going bankrupt. But it's okay. We'll keep paying you. Yeah. You know, and we'll just bankrupt the city. But that's the thing. You can't, we can't keep paying you because you can't squeeze blood from a turnip. They don't understand when the city goes bankrupt, there's nothing left. You don't have money to pay. It doesn't exist anymore. The money's gone. Yeah, that's just like all our, our local economy, you know, like City Cape Coral, as I always bring up, and they're always wanting to spend, 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 build this, build that, and, and do all this. And the city manager, Zerlag, has told the uh, city council many times, we're broke. Right. If we don't get these new taxes in place, like the fire assessment tax, we're broke. Right. We don't, we don't have anything. And the city wants to keep spending, and let's buy the old golf course off a of, uh, Coronado yeah, or I know what you're Palm Tree. About. Let's buy that, and, and what with is what? that the, is that the dead golf course off yeah, of like Orange they're, Orange they're talking Grove? About or... Buying it, I'm like I'm like telling everybody on Facebook, you, what do you mean buy it with what? We don't have any money. Buy it and do what with it? Come on, I mean guys, the city's broke. I mean, we need to f- attract more here's, businesses. Here's, to here's the problem now, and, and I'll get into Lee that. County. I'll get into that in in particular, but. When you look at the way that some towns look at their budget, they look at it as as an income problem. They don't bring in enough money instead of looking at what they spend. Right. Maybe they spend too much. Maybe that's the problem. Well, it's a spending problem all the way up the chain, whether it's city, county, state, federal. Everybody, nobody wants to cut their spending. It's, nobody it's, wants to live with the, the government within their means. Live within their means, right? We have to as citizens, but not our yeah. elected officials. I mean, what happens when you and I at home? Okay, we've got our. We know we make five hundred dollars a week. Okay, just for simple math terms, we got five hundred bucks a week coming in. Well, I know I can't spend more than that because after about a week and a half, I'm screwed. Exactly. But the city, the state, the federal government, they just where do they where do they how do they keep spending this money? That tells me the money's not worth anything. It's just printed. So they're spending this money that's coming from nowhere and they keep spending I mean because they're getting this, you know, endless uh in these endless loan programs from the next level up. But when it comes to like the town, say say city of Cape Coral for example. Well, if you've got a Three point two billion dollar budget, or whatever it is, you know, hundred million. I don't know what it is. And then you look at 
what your expenditures are and you say, oh, well, my expenditures are 20 billion more than my budget. All right, so so then our goal is we've got to we got to go ahead and raise more money. We got to raise that extra 20 billion or whatever it is. That's not the answer. Look at where you can trim. You know, you got so many multiple departments that are doing duplicate services, typically charging the residents also above the taxes that they're collecting, but they're charging them a fee at the window, let's say at the permitting department, for example. And I only use them because I'm familiar with that that area of business. You know, when you when you go pull a permit for a say a fire alarm system or something like that uh, at the city, well, you don't just need a fire alarm permit; you need an electrical permit too. They found another way to collect another fee, and they send their electrical inspector out to make sure that the fire alarm panel has a ground wire. <laughs> now, the fire inspector he's there for four hours going over that system with a fine tooth comb. Don't you think he could be trained to look for a ground wire? Yeah, I would think which so. Which he probably already is. But they found a way to collect more fees to keep paying for their kingdom. Maybe you don't need that electrical inspector. If you had to create a fee, create a permit to keep that guy employed, remember your goal as a city as a city is not to employ people. It's to provide the minimum ser- services necessary to support the city, exactly. the infrastructure. It's not to create jobs you're not a for-profit business you know what i'm saying i i don't get it you got you got you know other types of established you know sections of the city doing the same thing maybe the fire department maybe the you know the building department sanitation i don't know instead of trying to cut expenses they're always looking at ways to raise revenue so they can buy more trucks employ more people it's like they're building their kingdom because they want to compete with the next city so they can it's like they use that as a way to influence tourists to come down hey we got the biggest garbage department in town right you know come here because we're going to collect your garbage twice as fast as the city next door i mean i mean look how corrupt you know i always use kate Quill's example because i unfortunately live in that city look, well, and, look they are, at, and they are corrupt yeah look at the look at that city park they built over there on 46 place or avenue whatever it is it's basically a big huge lot right on the water some company uses a staging location when it did some underground utilities for the co-op and then i guess the city had bought the property used for a staging area and from my understanding of what i've read they way overpaid for the property because frankly i believe whoever you know owned the property was a friend of somebody on council so they double wait wait wait, wait. so yeah. you're, you're saying that there was an insider deal yeah, for which, a property purchase. <laughs> was Frank Mann involved in this? No, from, not uh, in this case. No. Not, not the downtown clown on the Rotary Club. No, I mean, he, he didn't he didn't sell the you know, had that property sold like he did for the Red Sox Stadium? No, no. To his buddy? No. Okay. But this park's a joke, JD. It's got it's got a path that winds through it, a couple benches, a couple shrubs, and that's it. And it's called a park. That's just like the park that's set next to the old library downtown uh, Fort Myers. They call it the old fire station. Yeah, they they, can't sell it because it's overpriced. Yeah, they bought a piece of property across from the fire station. Way above the the going rate. Put uh, manicured it real nice and called it a park. It's got one sidewalk that runs through the middle of it. Probably because they paid double, triple what it was worth to pay off a to pay off a buddy to to pay off a buddy as a favor. And now they can't sell because if they try to sell it, they're going to lose money, and then everybody's going to notice what happened. They're going to start digging into it. Let me ask you this. Let's say you're on the city council, and you're sitting there. I'd love to be at a city council. Yeah, that'll never happen. Well, let's say you're sitting there. <laughs> and and the guy next to you, who's also on the city council, he brings it up. He says, hey, uh, you know, I bring a motion to the floor. Uh, we want to look at purchasing the property sitting next to the fire station uh, you know, on Martin Luther King Boulevard. Um, and and it could, because we need a park in that area. There's no park. And he's selling it, man. He's like, because there's no park in that part of town. And, you, and you're, you're sitting there and you're like, okay, well, first of all, What's the property worth? Well, first of all, do we need another park? Okay, because there's going to be upkeep for the park. You're talking about reoccurring expenses for the rest of our life. Okay, then what's the motivation behind this? What's the motive of all, all of a sudden deciding we need to buy this land to turn it into a park? Right. Has there been you know has there been citizens complaining? Has there been citizen input asking for a park? In or that has area? there been someone lobbying that guy who just brought it up? wanting the, him to get the rest of the commission to get together and buy his property so he can make a nice profit. So, again, like you said, let's do a quick little 
um, study, appraisal. Let's see how much the, the, the property is worth. Okay, it's worth a million dollars. Why is it that you're wanting us to pay $3 million for it? Well, exactly. Remember the land scams that the Lee County Commission yep. paid for? Yep. All this overpriced. You know, it was, but it's still going on. It's still going on you know, with it, you the cities, these properties counties. Are, these properties were appraised at $4 million and they paid twelve. Who in their right mind is going to pay three times the property value unless it's a scam? Right. It's a scheme. It's a scandal. Must have been Frank Mann. Could have been. I don't know. <laughs> I, you know, I don't Tammy know. Tammy Hall. Well, yeah, Tammy. Yeah, she's paying. She had for to pay it. for a wardrobe. A little six months in prison. And new, slap on a wrist. New, new orange wardrobe. Hey, not to change the subject, but there's something that's been really bothering me the last couple of days. You just use some cream for that. Uh, no, I actually I did, and it hasn't gone away. But what's really bothering me is this new Facebook thing where it's given its you know Facebook users fifty different sexual orientations to choose from, and. You know, I've had battles with with the uh, LGBT, you know, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender community. LGBT. Over, yeah, that's it. Let me write this down. Hang on. L- yeah, G- whatever. LGBT. Okay, got it now. But I've been having arguments with in. them online over this because they're they're telling me that I'm what's wrong with society because I'm not accepting of their ways, and I, I don't know. Hang if you on wanna, a second. <clears throat> you I'm, are not accepting. I'm not accepting of it. Of of. So because I'm not accepting of a guy who says that he's a woman. And has all the guy parts. I mean, even if he's a guy and he changes to a woman, you're still a guy with still woman a guy. parts. Yeah, you're if you were a guy, guy once, if you're, you're born a guy, a guy, you're always going to be a guy. Even if you get a vagina stiffed, you know, stitched in there and bolt on some boobs, which you know, I wouldn't mind to set myself. But you know, if you do all that, you're still a dude. And you're telling me that I have to be acceptable of you, and then I'm what's wrong with society? I, I don't get that. No, I'm I'm with you 100. See, that's the problem. They're they're forcing their forcing their, their point of view and their point of view on us. Yet we're supposed to be forgiving and 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 uh, and open about it and accepting of, of of them changing what they were born as. When we're just looking at it from a common sense point of view, right. whether it's biblical or just common sense, and going it's common sense, dude, I don't, you're a guy. You're a guy. I don't want a guy. You're not a chick. Right, I don't and want a guy, a guy in the bathroom or you know, playing for the door. girls' softball team because you feel like you're a girl. Oh yeah, that's the story. That, that's the other story that I was going to bring up was the uh, guy in California who played on a baseball team as a freshman, and because he feels like a woman, maybe he, he bats like a woman. I don't know, but you know, the dude's like five eight, built like a you know brick shit house, and they said, okay, well since you feel like a woman, we're going to let you under Assembly Bill twelve sixty six. We're going to let you play on a girls' softball team because you feel like a woman. I, I'm telling you what, if I was a, a parent of a girl on that team, I'd pull her off right then. I go, you know what? If you're going to put my my daughter up against a guy, whether he looks like a flamer or not, she's off the team. I'm not putting up with that crap. All because of gender because, identity. Because gender identity. Men, I don't care how you, what you want to believe. Men are stronger than women. You got two different sexes playing against themselves, you know, against each other on the same sport. One is going to dominate the other because men are stronger at power sports, period. If you want to debate it, good luck. But it is the absolute fact. Now, sure, you may have a few women that are stronger than a few guys that that may be totally natural, but most of the time it's your bull dyke you know, steroid freak woman who's been to Gold's Gym for the last 20 years, injecting herself Hey, in don't the talk about my ex-girlfriend like that. Well, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but, okay, so, but, but real quick, though, I'm going to get back to, you got 50 or 47 different types of Facebook. Sexual orientations you can choose from Give now. me some of these. Do you have them in, in, in a list at all? I mean, uh, yeah, other I, than, I had them up here. I'll, I'll pull them back up again, but. Because uh, I want to I I hear what some of these might be. Because I, I thought there was apparently only the let's see L G B T. Is there more than L and G and B and T? No, I guess there's a whole bunch. I mean, I guess there's you know. Well, because you got H for hetero, which that doesn't count. That's not even in the group. You can't be hetero anymore. That's that's politically incorrect. Because God forbid you actually like the other sex, then you're in the minority. Apparently, it's amazing how three percent of America can make the other ninety ninety seven percent become the minority. Because the media is on their side, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm totally against it. Oh, I'm, I, I know, oh. I know. Well, hang on a second. It's under, it's on everybody's Facebook page. But from what I can see, they have trans, trans female, trans male, trans man, 
Well, well how's that different than trans male? I don't know. <clears throat> and then, I mean, it's what, re- what about trans am? They got trans am? It's under. It's under. <laughs> yeah, it says smoking the bandit. Awesome. Hang on a second. It's under basic information on your Facebook profile. So I'm gonna go to a Facebook page here. You can and, change it every day. Yeah, I mean, whatever. I feel, be kind of like. Uh, Mounds and Almond Joy, sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. Right, right. <laughs> so whatever. Well, I mean, you are kind of needy like a chick. I mean, you could put that whatever, on there. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> I guess because I raised three daughters, man. Whatever. Don't be, nah, don't be hating. So. Don't be hating. Don't be hating. My Trans Am. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what right. else trans- they got? I'm, oh, they got a bunch. I'm trying to pull it up here. Hang on. Uh, can't, you, you, Mr. Facebook freak, and you can't even use your Facebook? Well, yeah, but I, I, I don't change my sexual orientation, so it's like. R- very often. Not, not, not often. Every year or so. I mean. Well, for those of you who don't know, you can call in if you've got a comment. 239-689-8674. That's 689-8674 if you're local. You can also email me, jd at theledgeradioshow.com. I will respond at some point, and possibly during a break, I might read your email so that I can bring it up on the air. You are the slowest Facebook user I've ever I've, seen. I've, I've never looked for this. So I don't. It's under basic information. I mean, you know, I'm I have no it. idea. I'm skipping it. But I mean, who needs fifty different sexual orientations? Well, obviously, you don't want to You don't want to alienate anybody, okay? Because oh, if you do, then you know they can sue you because you didn't provide them the name they want to be called, the gender that they think they are today. You know, they feel like. A trans am today. <laughs> Tomorrow they might be a trans man. You know, I, guess like, I, I think tran- I found it. How about trans femme? Is that a trans femme? Gender. Here we go. <laughs> finally, after all that, you finally I found where found gender it. is. <laughs> Terrible. I guess like it. It's like playing cards with my sister's kids or something. Hey, it's a, it, if you go to the gender, it gives you female, male, and custom. <laughs> okay, let's customize it. <laughs> it's can like we Mr. Get, Potato Head. Can we get can pictures? Parts. Can we get pictures? Uh, I wish I could. Well, what's under customize? Anything? Oh, you know why? Because you can type in whatever you want, probably. Yeah, you can. You can type in whatever you want. It gives you gender, and it gives you a blank box, and you can type in whatever gender you want. You know what they should do? They should have stick figures that you can choose from. <laughs> and then the stick figure can show, you know, at- atomically incorrect pieces. You know, like a, it's got the fleshlight with, you know, with a boner. I'm going to change my gender right now to play... Uh, Play Playa. Play no, I just no, no. changed it. You can be a. Uh, what would you call it if you were a duck? If you if you use duct tape to strap it up. Uh, what's that called, Bill? Come on, tripod. You know, you know, you know, you use it when you use du- when you when you tuck it. You know, duct tape and you tuck it under. Sure. The tuck rule is that that's the tuck called, rule? That's called a pre-op. A pre-op. <laughs> I think that'd be good, the little stick figure. It's a little icon that pops up in your Facebook on, like, the top left somewhere. And it, it's got a picture of you, and then it's got underneath there, it's got your gender pictogram with however you want to. And you can move the arms and legs and the gender pieces. All of you can have a boob on your back if you want. Yeah, it's not let me It's not let me put any genders in there, I guess. Well, that's because you're not, you don't live in California. And I, you, I guess not, man. But it's, it's limited to. I tried to put playa in there. It wouldn't let me. It's not an approved gender. I guess not. It's how about trans player? Like you know what? I'm gonna try that right now. Trans player. So not player, playa. Trans. Not with a Z. Oh, there it is. Trans female. They, yeah, you got to type it in there. It's got to be at one of the approved genders. I, I don't know what they all are. I'm, I'm gonna go back to male because that's what I was born. That's how I'm gonna die. But I don't know about that. But this is ridiculous. I mean. And then I got attacked by all the LGBT people saying I'm not accepting and I'm closed minded and it, closed minded. You're either male or female. If you're a guy and you're gay, you're gay. But you're still a guy. You're still a guy. And if you're a woman and you're gay, you're still a woman. I, but if you're a guy and you feel like a woman, you know what? Keep it to yourself. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to see it. I don't want my daughter or my son to see it. Keep it to yourself, man. I mean, I don't want to. I mean, there's certain things on Facebook I don't want to know about. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But it's not just Facebook. It's society in general. I remember, mean, it's your employers, it's everything remember else. Remember the newscast about a week ago or so? They might have been talking about the Olympics. I can't remember, but the, but the news anchor, you know, the newscaster dressed up in drag. Um, you know, the guy made himself look like a girl or vice versa because that's what they, that's the person they think they are. Right. 
You know, I, I, I just I don't have to accept it. You can you can't force it on me. You know, I'm just not going to accept it, no matter what you say or do. I understand. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, when we get back from break, which is coming up, um, we've got some information that just came out from the Congressional Budget Office. You know, to switch gears from uh, transgenders a little bit. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk in a transgender voice. Um, raising the minimum wage. Okay, they've got some new information about raising the minimum wage and what it'll do for jobs. I mean, clearly, if you raise the minimum wage, it's going to be great for everybody. Right, of and course. You're gonna, and you're going to add jobs to the economy, right? Of course, of course. So if I say anything to the contrary, it's a big surprise. Right. I'm going to call you a racist. And I'm a racist because I'm a white guy <laughs> and, and um, yeah, I'm a conservative. So I've got to be a racist. Um, so let's talk about that when we get back. And uh, I know you got some other stuff that you're going to get in. You know what I also want to talk about is... George Zimmerman, he had his latest interview. He was with CNN or one of those liberal places. I think he's mentally unstable, man. That guy he probably just... is now. He is now. I don't think wow. he was. Wow. I mean, I guess this whole thing really messed him up. I mean, it's like somebody needs to just revoke his man card, man, and this is getting out of hand. Well, I think he went through such a difficult trial, not to get off subject here. Of course Prob- not. Probably like OJ, you know, that when he went through his trial, although he was guilty, and he went through such a difficult trial that it strained his relationship, his life. Now he's, you know, scared for his, you know, and it feels like his life's endangered every day. He has no place to live other than he's living with his with his family now. He's, um, I think he said it was $2.5 million in debt to his attorneys, which, hey, man, they got you off. So, right. you I know, mean, that pay up. I would say, well, what do you do if you don't pay him? You already found not guilty of murder. You're like, bring it. Yeah, Sue what me. are you going to do? Yeah. Sue me. Can't give blood from a stone. Yeah, I don't, I don't have uh, $2.5 million. Maybe that's why he's one of box rap stars now. Yeah. Yeah, maybe so. Uh, that didn't go through, though. Yeah, I know. They canceled it. Public outrage. Hi, yeah. I'm Christina All right, from let's Impact Events, and you're show. listening right to The Ledge Radio Show.
now, back to the Ledge Radio Show. What in the hell's diversity? <clears throat> well, I, I could be wrong, but I believe uh, diversity is an old, old wooden ship that was used during the Civil War era. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. <laughs> it jumped up a notch. It did, didn't it? Welcome back to the Ledge Radio Show. The phone number to call in <clears throat> is 239-689-8674. You can send me an email JD at the Radio Show dot com. Uh, Paul, before we went to break, I was I had said that we're going to look at this uh, CBO minimum wage deal, and we're going to get to that. But I'd like to go into some more social issues real quick. Um, one of them, and I say social issue, really, I mean th- this particular one is a huge First Amendment issue. This is the title from the Daily Caller: Texas teen faces eight years in prison over a Facebook comment. I mean, if a Texas teen can say something so outrageous to be looking at eight years in prison, can you imagine what we've got oh, racked up? Oh, I, if they I started searching for life. If they start searching our Facebook pages, I mean, you know the NSA's got us locked down. Oh, yeah, I'm already on there. I'm already on the watch list. I mean, if they're, if they're watching right now, you know, they're going to see just in the studio AR-15 on the desk, you know, 45 sitting somewhere. I don't know where your 45 is, but I know you got it somewhere. It's under your AR. Yeah, there it is. So, you know, you got that. I mean, that you they probably can't even watch this show in California or it's Massachusetts, in California. you know, any of these northern northeast. Yeah, northeast and California it's it's banned. Right. And you can't have any conservative uh talk no, shows. I, I there. think they're we're only heard in 37 states, I believe. <laughs> not 57 states? <laughs> no, not 57, All 57 states. states. All 57 states. Except for California. And I, and Putin likes our show. Well, that's nice. Yeah, he likes our show. He's watching it with no shirt on right now. But yeah, I, I, I mean, if here, let me let me tell you what he said. Okay, go ahead. So this kid, and he's uh, older than uh, seventeen. He's eighteen, so I can he's say he's a his gamer. Name. Let's point that out. He's a gamer. He's a dork. Ga- not yeah, gamer. Gamer. Not he gay. Games. He's not gayer. No, no gamer. He j- plays video games all the time, so he talks a lot of trash, and he's a dork. Right. So let me precursor what you're going to say with that. So go ahead. So he's been jailed for months for making uh, an idiotic but entirely sarcastic, violent threat on Facebook, and he's still facing up to eight years in prison. And who doesn't do that? Come on. I know, you, do it, you do it daily. Daily. I mean, uh, Multiple times a day. I mean, you've even had to go to court for it. You know. Yes, I have, and I won. You did win. Thank you. You, you weren't facing eight years, but you did win. It cost me my savings, though. Yeah, yeah all $12. Sucks. I know. Yeah, I know. Um, so the 18 year old is charged with making here it comes terrorist threats against a school prosecutors are determined to get either a guilty verdict or force carter to admit his guilt in exchange for a reduced sentence now you're talking about an 18 year old kid now obviously in this country that makes you an adult on paper um but you got a dork sitting in his bedroom playing video games all day every day on Facebook, obviously, like you, and making these, you know, making threats because someone pisses him off. And his lawyer says the case is ridiculous, should be thrown out. Um, to quote him, he says, this whole thing is totally and completely bonkers. Uh, that's what he said to the, the Houston Press. Carter made his comments, as the 18-year-old kid, on a Facebook thread in February of last year. A fellow online gamer, dork nerd, was provoking him and caused Carter to say things he would come to regret, obviously. Carter said, I'm effed in the head, all right. And I blanked that out for you. Beep. I think I'm a shoot up a kindergarten and watch the blood of the innocent rain down. Clearly, this kid's been playing too many video games and watching too many movies. Way too many video games. And eat the beating heart of one of them. Wow. Now, I say that every day. I mean, but... (laughs) It's still America. You still have your First Amendment rights. Apparently not. You used to. You used to Apparently not. Now, so this is the thought police. So they think because he said this that he's guilty. Right. He's already killed these kids. Is that anything like the Facebook police? Oh, that's what I'm saying. Right. Thought police, Facebook police. Wouldn't you think that the cops could... They've seen his thread. They've been alerted to it, right? So they've got a detective on it now. Right. Now he goes, all right, let's put a car out in front of his house. Alerted by the Canadians. Right. Let's point that out. The okay. Canadians. The, okay. The spineless there Canadians. There you go. The, the Canadians that have no army to speak of, that rely on America uh, to protect their every whim. And they got crack pipe vending machines. Yes. So anyway, <laughs> so couldn't they have had a detective or even a 
beat cop. I don't care. Go check this kid out. Talk check to him. Check him out. Interview. Not even. Not, not even. I don't, I don't even. You could, if you wanted to. You know, you could do that. Or if you real <laughs> knock on his door, if ask you, him a few questions. If you really thought he was a threat, get a warrant. Check out his place. If you really thought he was a threat, follow him. You know, see if he brings a big gun with him outside the house. It's too much work. It is. Right. So they so they arrest him for what he's said. Clearly, this is no longer America. No, it's not. So, <clears throat> would you agree the comments were stupid? Yeah, they were stupid comments that a, that a dorky gamer made to another dorky gamer. I mean, I mean big deal. You should hear I mean. these kids talk. You know, when, when my kids are playing Xbox live, online, you can hear the other kids. And if you video record it, you would think that they were, you know, I know. I mean, it's just, it, you get in the, in the mode. I mean, whether it's playing a video game or playing a sports, you know, playing football or something, you get in that zone and you, and you say things. I mean... But, you know, we've gotten so PC in this country that every effing word you say out of your mouth is causing you a problem. Well, this is something that, that his attorney stated, and I, I think this is true, and he uses more um, law language than I would know to use. He says, there must be a clear and present danger, and, and there must be a true threat if you don't have a true threat, then the First Amendment protects your speech, plain and simple. Used to protect your speech. I mean, now, now clearly, there are lo- there are laws against creating a hostile environment with your words, or, or creating public panic, yeah, like you yelling run, fire, fire in the, in the movie, movie theater. theater. Yes, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. I mean, but you're you're talking about on Facebook in a thread, dueling dorks. Yeah, two dueling dorks, <laughs> and one of them's looking at eight years, and the prosecutor is just hell bent on getting this kid because he thinks he's got you know the next Connecticut school shooter right well that's just that's just like that lady that just got arrested for her uh, DVD rental from 2005 she gets Saw arrested that. gets put in jail yeah. yet we're letting all millions of illegal Mexicans run across the border and we're giving them government benefits social security driver's license what can I do for you today it's like a, a drive through you know they're, they're okay with giving you know, all these illegal immigrants something, but you know, let's 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 ignore them and let's prosecute good taxpaying citizens that rented a movie nine years ago and didn't return it. Yeah. What the what the hell, man? Well. And then let's look at this next story that came on the Blaze and they've been following it for a while regarding this young girl, uh, Justina, um, freejustina.com, I think is the website, Justina Pelletier. Parents took her, I guess she got sick with the flu. She's the poor girl had a bunch of medical problems over the years. The parents have been staying on top of her, you know, health issues by taking care of her. They take her to Boston Children's Hospital and, and you know, they d- determined that uh it, it it wasn't a mitochondrial disorder that they, basically it was a munchausen by proxy and that you're over medicating your kid and we're going to take custody of your kid and you can no longer see your child. Now, how many of you people could actually sit there and, and live through this. I mean, I'd be busting out the door on my AR-15 and taking my kid back. I mean, yeah, see, i got to say that. I, I would not let the hospital take my kid. And now they're only allowed to see their daughter like once a week for an hour, and they've taken her out of the hospital and put her into a mental facility so she's getting no pain medication. She's in constant pain. I mean, if you if you folks haven't now, heard about this story, let me you ask look you it this. up. Now, let me ask So I didn't get a chance to read this story. Oh, it's terrible, um, man. It's heartbreaking. But, but so, so they... The parents can't see her except nope. like one day a week. Yep. And why is it that, that she's not in the parents' possession? I mean, were they because they think that they, they that they were over med- much housing by proxy. They, the the Boston Massachusetts Hospital Children's Hospital thinks that the that the parents were doing all these medical procedures for the daughter that she didn't really need. So they were just doing these procedures like you know faking their daughter was sick when she really is sick. Matter of fact, she's dying. And the courts put a gag order on the parents, and they broke it today on Glenn Beck's show. To discuss how terrible the conditions are for their daughter and how she's dying, huh. and they can't get their daughter back. I, I couldn't even imagine that if if you know my kids were taken and I, and I I didn't do anything to cause that. Yeah, that that that's a situation where 
you know, somebody like me, I would become unstable. It's lock and load time. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, the parents have spent all their money trying to keep, you know, get their daughter back. They can't get her back. This hospital is basically taking control of their child. And, you know, and, and Glenn Beck has finally stood, you know, st- stood up to try to help these people out. You can go to www.freejustina.com if you want to donate or help out. Uh, it's you got to read the story. It's on the blaze. It's one of their top stories. And this has been going on for quite some time now. And, just imagine yourself in these parents' shoes, you know, that you take your kid in for, you know, the flu to a medical hospital. And next thing you know, they're telling you, well, we're going to try something new. And then next thing you know, you got security guards in your face telling you, you need to leave the hospital. You know, we're going to take care of your child. Yeah, that's um, that's all, scary. Man. All I can say about that is that's why they make high capacity magazines. Exactly. You know, and, and 62 grain, you know, steel core penetrators is. Uh, I, I could never sit back. I mean, I could ne- that one hour visit, I'd be busting the door down with my kid, and ain't nothing gonna stop me. I mean, these poor that's people. a movie for uh, you know Schwarzenegger in his heyday. Exactly, he rescue his kid from the uh, from the hospital, and I, I, here's the, here's my thing: is the hospital like a like a, a county hospital, or is it no? I guess it's privately it, no, owned. No, it's Boston Children's Hospital. I guess it's a huge hmm. facility, and they, and they were able to get judges to okay it and, and say that you know this girl's really not sick, and that the the parents are making her think she's sick, so we're going to take her off her pain well, medicine. Well, let me ask you this. Why, why can the parents not go to the police or the authorities and say... Because they've this, already got custody. The, 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 state, the hospital already went through a judge, and they took custody of these people's child. And the judge won't well, give I mean, it is, it, is it possible that these parents uh, were abusing the child? I no. Mean, that's not the story. No. That is no. odd, man. They that's had their own odd. team of doctors that were already taking care of their daughter when they checked her uh, into this Boston Children's Hospital, and and uh, they've been silenced as well. Well, see, that's I mean, that's that's a story. That's a really odd story because it's very odd. You've got a hospital. I, I didn't even know the hospitals had that kind of power, but I guess they're you know I guess they're given this power, you know, by the by someone. I mean, may, maybe they're uh, you know maybe somehow or another they. The state gives them that power. I don't know. I don't. I don't see how they can even exercise that kind of right to take your kid. Well, they did. There's many stories about uh, this this young lady, uh, Jessica Pelletier. But uh, if you go and Google Jessica Where, Pelletier, you're what's the, what state is this in? Uh, Massachusetts. Huh. Another northeastern state. All another, right. Another liberal state. Another blue state. Another blue state flexing its muscles. You know what sucks about that? Blue is my favorite color, and that you know, and red is my least favorite color. And yet, you know, Republicans' color is red. I don't know how we got that. Screw it again, I guess. All right, so let's get back to the other story, the well, CBO and minimum wage. No, no, I'm not, I'm not even there yet because I guess oh, – You got another story? I got something else. It's not about – Really? It's, another another well, social story? Yeah, check this out. Now, now, my first one was First Amendment, I think. This one, crazy. Coming out of Breckenridge, uh, Colorado – from the, oh, a, from the AP. I know which one you're bringing <laughs> yeah. up. A, a Colorado couple's dream to own land in the mountains has turned into a nightmare <clears throat> now that government officials have decided to come after them with eminent domain. So this this couple, uh, Andy and Seal Berry, have a 10-acre plot up on the side of a mountain and in a 100-year-old a cabin. They bought this three-bedroom home uh, in a small subdivision, but again, their place is up on the side of a mountain, 10 acre parcels uh, in the midst of the White River National Forest. Now, that's the key word National Forest. Now, the county government, which is alarmed, they're, they're, they're concerned that the couple, couple drives their ATV up a 1.2 mile old mining, mining road, road to the cabin, wants to take their land. And they're doing so by claiming eminent domain. And But as the story goes, rather than using the practice of government seizure of private property to promote economic development, the county's using it to preserve, quote, open space. space. Now, <clears throat> what's weird about it, this couple, they've allowed hikers to travel through their property. They have no plans to develop the land. No fences. They were negotiating with the county at the time. Um because it was condemned property and they're saying open space is all it's ever been but the government's going to take their 10 acres on the side of a mountain to preserve open space it's not like they're trying to change the zoning to install a shopping mall here right they're going to take their property 
I wish they'd take my property out in Lehigh. Yeah, that'd be nice. I can't even get the I can't even give my property away. <laughs> Lehigh, 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 Lehigh. Yeah, these people are are getting a shaft. Basically, the you know they're they're one ten acre parcel in the middle of millions of acres, and and the and the local city jurisdiction just wants to take their property all because they're using a snowmobile or ATV to get up to their property. It, it makes no sense. I mean, it's another overreach by right. by government. Well. And, you know, in Colorado, there's been a few instances of cities deciding to confiscate land um, so they can, quote, preserve it because it, uh, the, st- it's the state religion there is outdoor recreation. Now, I thought it was pot. Well, uh, yeah, well now they need this. You know what they're going to do? They're going to use this open space to plant pot. Hey, yeah, yeah. Um, in the wintertime. They're saying that the, the most significant was when uh, Telluride in 2004 seized 572 acres that the owner wanted to develop along the San Miguel River. I heard about that. And he wanted to leave it as open space. He wasn't going to do anything with it, and they still took it. Well, the state Supreme Court upheld the confiscation, so they sided with the government. Of course. Saying that especially overcrowded mountain towns need to preserve their recreational and natural assets. Well, maybe the city should think ahead of time, like, like, Going back to Cape Coral, have some forethought and, and invest in some of that mountainside property before regular Joes like you and I buy it. Is it a novel idea? Maybe they should have some forethought and buy some property in the side Here's of the Here's what I can't figure out. Since when is it the city or the or the county's responsibility to provide open land for who? The Chinese. Uh, who? The Chinese. I mean, <laughs> if the land's available for purchase. The Mexicans. And you want to purchase it to do whatever you want to do with it, as long as it's within the zoning. Of that piece whatever of Whatever zoning. Exactly. Okay, then why is it up to them to, st- why is it their responsibility to stop Because they know better. You? They know better than you. Right. They, they can make a decision better than you can. Yeah, yes, they can. Because you elected them to do their job, so let them do their job. I don't get it, man. I don't get it either, man. But our federal our federal government's the same way. I mean, like I tell my friends that say, "Well, I own this and I own this piece of property, and I own that piece of property." I'm like, "Yeah, try not paying your taxes for a year or two and see if you still own that property." We really don't. Nothing you buy in this country do you really own. Mm-mm. Nothing. Yeah, I mean, I've got a you know small piece of property up in uh, Lake Wait, Wales. Yeah, your bunker. Yeah, the, at the bunker. The bunker. And um, and if I don't pay my twelve dollars a year in uh, land tax, you they lose could, it. They could take it. Exactly. Twelve bucks a year. Got to pay the tax. You never really own anything. No, because you pay the tax forever. Ever. At no point do you pay off your tax. And I guess you know. I guess what I could do, I could technically prepay the tax now, but who knows if the tax is ever going to go up? Right. Um, here's a, another story kind of along the similar lines. A lot of government overreach in multiple states, many of them up north. Um, Massachusetts again. One Get of the, out of here. Yeah. The uh, northeast? Come cra- on. Crazy, I know. Uh, <laughs> one of the bluest states in the country has some of the strictest gun control laws in the nation. Get out of here. But um, surprisingly enough... They also rest, uh, strictly control sales of pepper spray and maize, among other d- defense devices. That's cologne. Yeah, cologne, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> cologne to some criminals. Um, currently, there's a Massachusetts resident looking to buy uh, pepper spray or mace, but they must have a state-issued firearms identification card, the same as someone who's buying a gun. So Massachusetts. Well, that sounds like like New Jersey. New Jersey made it made BB guns that way. You got to have a permit for a BB gun in New Jersey. Thank you, Chris Christie, having a double cheeseburger. I mean, what the heck? It's a BB gun. Well, Massachusetts- what's next? Slingshots? Oh, absolutely. A slingshot hurts you more than a BB Spit gun. Spitballs. Yeah. Spitballs are kind of nasty, though. I know, but still, I mean, it's it's just well, regulation, regulation, and- regulation, regulation, well, here, regulation. Well, here's here's the thing, you know. You and I both. Obviously, we can complain about other states' regulations, and that's why we live where we live now. Yeah, we like Florida. We like the as, we like the rules. Governor Scott stands as, up for gun owners. As as overreaching Chris Christie. as overreaching as some of the rules can be, it's still one of the least ruled 
states that there are. Yeah, we're right behind Texas. We're, yeah. we're close behind Texas. You know, Massachusetts, <clears throat> it's the only state in the country that imposes the firearms ID card restriction for the non-lethal defense sprays. So there, there you go again with a broad brush of the government, and in this case a state government, given the same punishment that they'd give to a gun owner, a gun buyer, for someone that wants to use pepper spray. Do they have a lot of, uh, they must have had a lot of uh, uh, drive-by pepper spraying. Yeah, I guess. A lot, a lot of convenience store holdups with pepper spray. Well, speaking of the Northeast, I'm sure you've also seen the, all the stories out lately with Connecticut and all the gun owners that are ignoring the registration deadlines up there. And they've got like millions of people that haven't turned in they say at least 350,000 weapons, and they've only had 50,000 people register them. So you've got the mass majority of gun owners in Connecticut saying, screw you, Connecticut. Yeah. We're not going to register our guns. We're not going to turn in our high-capacity magazines. We're not complying. And, and the state's like, what do we do? You know, Because they, they know if they try to force it, it's only going to be a snowball effect yeah. nationwide. Well, they, they've passed these restrictive, ridiculous Over- Overreaching, overreaching, over gun control laws that I'm sure will come up in the Supreme Court, and hopefully we'll have constitutionalists and on the Supreme Court when it comes through, and they will override and overrule the state's laws that you know basically you know took the rights away from the people to defend themselves. Um, you know, that's my only that's my only saving grace. I hope for those people that's going to happen, and and God knows what's going to happen if we lose. Governor Scott to Governor soon to be possible Charlie Hippocrist. Charlie Hippocrist, as, as Drew flip calls flop him. Flip Charlie. I mean, if, I'm if, a Republican. I'm an Independent. I'm a Democrat. I'm a, I'm a whatever gets Reagan, me elected today. I'm a Reagan Republican. Well, that but that's my point though. Is I know what's going to happen if we lose our Republican governor and get a Democrat governor. What's going to happen to the laws like stand your ground? You know, I mean, I'm moving to Texas. Well, I got a story about that coming up after the break at the top of the hour. Oh, Jesus. Because Ted Cruz is saying, or I'm sorry, Ted Cruz, Rand Paul made a pretty compelling statement that Texas could go Democrat within 10 years if some major changes aren't made. Oh, yeah, we're heading in that direction. That's that's a, a good subject. But, hey, just a quick reminder, too, you know, with all these anti-gun laws that are going to affect in the Northeast, uh, don't forget the new news that Remington, 2,000 jobs, just left New York for Alabama. I would have, too. I mean, Colorado, you've had all the gun manufacturers, Magpul and the rest, pulled out of there for other gun-friendly states. Now you got New York. They're, they're running like rats from a sinking ship. Well, you know? when you're in a state that doesn't support your industry, that demonizes your industry and makes you look like the bad guy, that it's the gun that's causing the, the problems, wouldn't you want to leave? Oh, yeah. Wouldn't you, want, wouldn't you rather go to a state that's inviting, that says, hey, come on down here. You can sell your wares here. We're not going to make you look, you know, we're not going to make it out, make you out to be the, the devil in the room. You know, we're going to we're going to support your business. We might even give you, you know, some tax breaks to move here. You know, we'll give we'll, we're going to pay for your for your moving expenses to get you here. Bring Remington here. And they're, that's what they're doing. And they're and they're moving out in droves for the northeast. Now, this was Remington on this particular one. Yeah, this is Remington Arms. Yeah, because we're 1200 the, people leaving. New York. Where did Mag did Magpul ever end up pulling out yeah, they of? Pulled out, uh, yeah, they moved out. Of, they moved out of Colorado. I think they went to Arizona. I'd have to Google it. I mean, it wasn't that long ago, so you know, I'm sure that they don't have a factory up and running already. Well, they they might are in a process of it. I mean, they might have a minimum workforce in Cal- Colorado, but they'll never go back to Colorado once they fully transition to their new location. I, I wonder if it's just as simple though as getting a UPS store address and saying, well, the new uh the new mailing address is now in Florida, so we don't have to pay those taxes and uh you know we're we're now based out of Florida. That's where our mail comes. Yeah, it looks like they moved to Wyoming. Okay. Made in Wyoming. Yeah, Wyoming's not bad. That's yeah. I mean it, you know you got a lot of hunting there. Yeah, Wyoming's beautiful. I've been through Wyoming. It's a beautiful state. Is it pretty flat? Is Wyoming flat no, or has it got other, mountains? It's got mountains. Grand Teton Mountains, man. It, Tall mounds. I went through them. I remember that. I was 
20 years old, moved out to Idaho for the summer with an old girlfriend of mine before I moved to Colorado, and I drove through the Grand Teton Mountains, and I'm just a kid. I didn't know any better, and I'm driving down the mountain riding the brakes. Hey, this, don't this, ever do this that. is your theme song. What's that? This song here. You don't hear it? Blake Shelton? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Well, we're coming up on a hard break. We'll be back in about uh, five minutes or so. Ledge Radio Show. We'll have some more interesting crap when we get back. Well, the boys around here don't listen to the Beatles run. Old Bo Cephas threw a jukebox needle at the honky tonk where they boot stomp all night. What? That's right. Yeah, and what they call work a digging in the dirt. Gotta get it in the ground for the rain come down to get paid to get the girl in your four wheel drive. Yeah, the boys around here drinking that ice cold beer, talking about girls. Talking about trucks, running them red dirt roads out, kicking up dust. The boys around here, sending up a prayer to the man upstairs. Backwoods legit, don't take no lip. Shoot a back, a shoot a back, a shoot a back, a spit. Oh, hell. Well, the boys around here, they're keeping it country. Ain't a damn one know how to do the Dougie. Well, no, I'm not in Kentucky, but these girls around here, yep, they still love me. Yeah, the girls around here, they all deserve a whistle. Shaking that sugar sweet as Dixie Crystal. They like that yawling southern drawl and just can't help it because they just keep falling for the boys around here. Drinking that ice cold beer. Talking about girls. Talking about trucks, running them red dirt roads out, kicking up dust. The boys around here, sending up a prayer to the man upstairs. Backwoods legit, don't take no lip. Chew the back, a chew the back, a chew the back, a spit. is the only sound we out of town have you ever got down with a do you want to get down with a Do you follow politics? Do I look like I follow politics? What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Hey guys, this is Matt with your band, Vexel, and you're listening to The Ledge Radio Show. With my friend, Christopher Walken. <laughs> Welcome to the second hour of the Ledge Radio Show. I am your host, J.D., and I'm joined by special guest host, Milton Paul. Thank you. Thank you very much. Phone lines are open, 239-689-8674. Or for the viewers around the world watching live streaming video on the Ledge Cam, 239-689-8674. You know, that, that's what the nice thing, Paul, about technology these days. You know, we can be streaming live. We're not subjected to just the local radio listenership, you know, in the 20 square miles. No, we're worldwide. It, you know, it can be worldwide. Um, and, I, and I just wonder if folks from other countries, when they, when they hear our 
type of conservative talk radio. They're freaking out. Blue collar, you know, blue collar is as dumbed down as it gets. And not because, you know, that's our shtick. That's huh? just how it is. Huh? Exactly. Um, I wonder what they. I wonder how they feel if they if they look at it and they go, man, I wish we lived there. Yeah, they they can't pick up the phone. They're afraid that the government's monitoring them. Well, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> kind of like us. <laughs> yeah, their 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 government. If, if they were if they were found, uh, you know, with looking at USA like they wanted to to defect and come over here, they'd probably be killed wherever they're coming from. Like that pilot from Ethiopia that. Oh that, yeah, uh, yeah. That, that was something. <laughs> took over the whole flight because he wanted to get the heck out of the country. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Locked the pilot out of the cockpit and said, "I'm out of here. I'm defecting." Now, here was <laughs> now we we've heard of a, a little bit of this going on um, over the last several months. A few states, some some states you wouldn't even think of, you would never think to to see these states. A few states talking about secession. Get out of here, not, Texas. Not necessarily. Texas. Not Gotta not be just, Texas. Yeah, not just secession. You know, from the U.S., okay, but states that want to, sp- they want to split up their own state. New York. <laughs> Why get am the, I not? I'm not shocked. Come get on. The, now, who would have known? I would not have thought that because I just assumed that New York in general, all of New York. Well, New York, you got New York City, and I've got, you know, I've got friends and family from New York, but you got New York City, and then there's the rest of New York. What happens in the city, not necessarily, is what goes on in the rest of New York. I've been in New York several times, New York State, not the city, and it's a beautiful place. And most of the people in New York State are nothing like the people in the city. Well, you have a bunch of liberals that live right in that city, just like in Los Angeles, in Detroit, all, in all, Boston. All, all the all the Baghdads. Right. All the destroyed, bombed-out, Democrat-controlled cities. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that you're absolutely right. Actually, the, the way this is... The way this is coming down is you've got the townships in and around and including New York City that are the is the liberal base of the state and then everything else like the other 56 counties um you know from there north want to become not their own state that's what's weird about this one they don't necessarily want to become the 51st state they want their state to split into two distinct, not even little commonwealths, but they want they want one state but controlled by two autonomous regional governments. I don't know how that would be, how that would work, but the state would remain this way that the article says. A token presence funded by the 3% sales tax would remain united for federal purposes such as the electoral college and congressional seats. But the power on all state matters would be transferred to the two regions, New York City and then the rest of the state. Yeah, with like the, I said, New York City sense. and the rest of New York. Yeah, New York City, which is like uh, our, our buddy Cop Ben from, from Illinois. He says you got the – Oh, Barty the, Fife? Yeah, you got the, the state of Chicago <laughs> and then the rest of, you know, the rest of Illinois. Um that's how it is. I grew up in Illinois, so I, I speak from experience, you know, living in the Joliet area, that it's that's what it's like. You know, being in Chicago is like being in a totally different country. And then once you get outside of Chicago into the suburbs, whether it's southern Illinois, western Illinois, northern Illinois, or my little area of, of you know, of middle Illinois in the Joliet area, it's nothing like the city of Chicago. It's well, nothing that's, like that's it. exactly the way they're they're describing it in New York. That you've got the downstate region uh, would be called New York and includes the, the counties of Bronx, Kings, New York, Queens, Richmond, Nassau, Rockland, Suffolk, and Westchester. Basically, New York City and its neighboring counties, including Long Island. <clears throat> the upstate region... I could go for a Long Island iced tea right about now. The, yeah, I bet you could. <laughs> the upstate region tentatively would be named New Amsterdam after the 17th century Dutch settlement on Manhattan Island that eventually became New York City. And this would comprise the state's remaining 53 counties, including the state capital of Albany. So upstate New York is less prosperous, less populous than the Big Apple region. Only about 7 million people um, of the state's 19 million would be in the New Amsterdam section. Um, And what's weird about this, 
I call bullshit. No, no, no. It's, the plan is the brainchild of the of the Upstate Conservative Coalition, which is a Tea Party style group um, that launched a Facebook page called Divide NYS New York State into New Amsterdam and New York, and a website a website called New Amsterdam ny.org uh, let's see one of the uh i guess the the head guy for this idea uh said the two regions proposal would be much easier than splitting new york into two states because that would require an act of congress and god knows you can't get anything done in congress congress being the house and the senate now you can get the house to do something or you can get the senate to do something but you can't get them both to do the same thing of course uh, not. the two regions plan could be, uh, could be implemented by votes of the state legislature in two sessions. The only drawback, the only problem is um, New Yorkers vote every 20 years on whether to hold a state constitutional convention, and the next vote is slated for November 2017. So they still have a few years to wait before they can even vote for this, but in as you know, short a time, it's three years from now, you could possibly see New York State split into two autonomous regions. Um, and apparently it's not the first time this has happened. But like you and I said earlier, this has been, this type of dissent has been growing since Obama took office. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you can say what you want about George Bush, but there was never this type of dissent. I mean, yeah, a lot of jokes, late night jokes, you know. All kinds of comments about George Bush, but you know, like I was telling a friend of mine today, uh, when Bush took his vacations, the majority of his vacations were either at his ranch that he owned or at the government ranch. It was one or the other. Yeah, Camp David. Camp David. It was either one place or the other. It wasn't Hawaii. It wasn't Africa. It wasn't skiing in Colorado. None of this bullshit that we're seeing with the Obamas taking vacation after vacation. I don't know with all these vacations. When does the guy have time to work? Well, I tell you or, the truth. Sorry, when does he have time to campaign? I, exactly. I'm. He does a better job when he's on vacation because he's not screwing us up when he's on vacation. Other than costing us millions of dollars to go... Um, but speaking of, um, Obama's Valentine's Day bachelor golf holiday marks his 23rd vacation. The guy's had 20 23 th- vacations. He's the 20, president. With, I, with I haven't all, had that many vacations my entire life. With all the problems that our country's facing daily, people out of jobs, people out of work, insurance screwed up, in, in war, in more wars that he's put us in. Ambassadors being killed. Matter of fact, there's been more people killed in wars since Obama's been president, up to date, than Bush after eight years. Just want to throw that little, little factoid out there. Factoid. Well, and I, I didn't fact check it, but I'll, I'll take it's your word for it. It's true. Look it up. Look it up. More more military like deaths under Obama up, in five I, years. I'd like to say I will look it up, but I won't. I'll just take your word for it. Take my word for it. I would not lie, for, lie to you. You don't have long enough legs. <laughs> nice one. Well... But you're right. 23 vacations. 23. In five and a half years. On the taxpayer's dime. Yeah. But, yeah. I, I think the president's... Yeah, I like that new bill that's going through Congress right now where they're trying to make it to where the dinners prepared at the White House have to follow the same school lunch calorie <laughs> menu as what M- Michelle Obama has put in mooch? place. Then the mooch? Right, so they can't have no more 2,500-calorie entrees and and all the side dishes. They have to follow the same caloric you intake. Know, intake as what they're giving our you school think, kids. You think the Mexican pizza is – is you think they're going to they're gonna Well, it's really Mexican made by pizza? Mexicans. No, no, no. I mean, you, you remember the Mexican <laughs> pizza I'm talking about, the, the octagon pizza from yeah, school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That stuff was great. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd pile two of them on top of each other make like a sandwich. But not anymore. Go to school lunch now, which I do that occasionally, my little kindergarten guy that I have at home. And I go to school lunch, and I gotta say that it, it tastes okay, but you it's know, not the same. it's not the same. Everything's baked. There's no deep fried goodness. I mean, what's school lunch without deep fryers, man? Well, I don't it's, remember. I don't know if I remember any deep fried. I had deep fryers. No, because well, I mean, you're younger I, than me. I, I remember even our French fries, our crinkle cut French fries, were baked. They came out on a on a baking sheet. Oh man! And, and if they didn't cook them long enough, they were still kind of rubbery and cold and like wet. You know, like they were still frozen. Yeah, I know. You kind of wiggle them. They were ter- you had to use ketchup to give them flavor. That's right. But I mean, at school lunch, man, you're lucky if you even get a ketchup packet. You have to ask for a ketchup packet. 
I mean, just uh, the, the ridiculous guidelines that we have. And then the Obamas control these lavish uh, state dinner parties where they're feeding people you know, fancy lobster tails and all these other gourmet meals. And it's like, and then she's forcing our kids to follow this strict, I know. you know, diet. Yep. I know. Um, <laughs> what's funny is, so this particular vacation, now, now he's there by himself without her. He's golfing in California. And the way they, what's really funny about it is California's in this huge drought Okay, they're they're you know them yeah. and they're in a big war over with water. Yeah, it's a, it, it's not a real natural drought. You know, let the listeners know that this drought is a man-made drought to save some uh, oh, skip-toed frog fairy right. that they don't want hurt. They don't so want to release. They don't want to release, they don't release, don't release water, water because they don't want to hurt these endangered uh, nothing that does Smurfs. That, that does the nothing Smurfs. for the, anything. Right. It's like fire ants. Let's save the fire ants. Let's save the fire ants. So he's in California on a golf course that's luscious green golf course where they have no water anywhere nearby. So they're pumping the water in for him. And then she, Mooch, the big Mooch, is in Aspen, Colorado at another ski trip. She's got to be the most skiing black chick I've ever seen. Uh, Yeah, I know. And on top of that, she just got back from, what, 23-day vacation in Hawaii for her birthday? Without him. Without him. And you know the rumor flying around is that they're gonna these two are getting divorced, right? I think she's secretly really a guy. <laughs> she, I mean, she kind of looks like it, I, dude. I mean, she's always scratching down low. Have you seen the pictures? Oh. She's always scratching, and there's all these she is kinda, so commercials going on about her, man. She's, she is kind of linebacker ish, dude. She's she's packing something down there, and it's not a pistol. She's packing. She kind of reminds you of uh, Venus yeah. Venus Williams, you know, at fifty. I think Secret Service is knocking at the front door right now. Well, guess what the cost of these? Uh, <laughs> guess what the cost of these two vacations is going to cost the taxpayers? Two point four million. Two point four million for them to go on when when everyone's out of job, out of work, the economy's and in, they want to raise crapper. minimum wage. They want to raise the minimum wage, right? And she wears twelve thousand dollar dress to a state dinner, right? But she they argue that they're for the common people. Hmm. I'm with it. I'm with it. You know, speak. <laughs> Speaking of, I'll go into that story on the CBO raising the you know, with the minimum wage deal. Okay, so like I preface before going to the the break at the uh, top of the hour, if we raise the minimum wage to ten dollars and ten cents an hour, guess how many jobs will be lost, not gained. Guess how many jobs will be lost. Simply by raising the minimum wage to ten ten. Uh ten thousand jobs. Five hundred thousand jobs. But why? I mean, if you're raising the minimum wage, it means you're paying people more money. Well, remember right? remember what we were talking about earlier when we were talking about the unions. If someone came into my place of business, the government, and told me I had to pay my employees a certain dollar amount, and I wasn't currently paying them that. You know, maybe it's a McDonald's or it's a it's the supermarket, okay? And and this is the baggers, this is the cashiers that just started or whatever. No longer can I pay them the entry level pay. Now their entry level pay is mid level pay for that job title, that job type. Now it's ten ten. Well, what does that do to my budget? What does that do to my payroll? My payroll just went up by thirty percent. Forty percent, my payroll goes up for those folks. You know what I'm saying? Right, I know. So, if my payroll goes up by that much, and payroll for those of you that have never owned a business, that's the most expensive part of running a business. Right, that's so- the that's the biggest line item on your profit and loss statement for outgoing expenditures is payroll. And that's P and L for you folks in Rio Linda. Exactly. <laughs> so. <clears throat> I might have to reevaluate how many employees I can have. If if I could only say if I can only afford a hundred thousand dollars in payroll, that's the number. Okay, I can only afford a hundred thousand dollars in payroll because our sales only only pay for that much in payroll. Well, you just told me I had to pay everybody three dollars and something, you know, three dollars more an hour or two seventy five more an hour, whatever it was. That's going to add to my payroll. Well, Johnny and Susie. I gotta let you two go because I gotta pay Milton Paul and Tripod Bill a little bit more. 
So I just lost my I just lost half my staff or a third of my staff. Well, and the other thing that you're leaving out of this story too is that the CBO's numbers are always grossly under reality. They they, they don't exactly project what the real numbers are going to be. I mean, if we if we if they do raise minimum wage to ten ten, it's not going to be a half a million jobs are going to be lost. It's going to be more like a million million and a half jobs lost because the CBO is not exactly that that great at crunching numbers. Right. So it's good. The true true effect of raising the minimum wage won't be felt till years later. Just like with Obamacare, everything's being truly felt now. Even though King Obama has you know changed the deadline, moved the deadline, and everything else, you know we're still feeling the effects because so many employers. The big box stores, big corporations have had to cut their full-time employees to part-time hours. So, you know, the full effect won't be felt till well after the minimum wage is, well, is and, uh, and, and raised. To, and to add to that, if I'm a, just to put it in layman's terms, if I'm a fast food business, which they're going to be affected greatly because they don't pay their employees a lot because typically you've got a lot of teenagers working there other than management. You know, you've got... Uh, you know, folks that, that are new to the job market working in a low-skilled job. I mean, really, think about it. How much skill does that you have to have to run the drink station or the, you know, fryer? Not a lot. So you pay those people, you know, the, the dollar amount that coincides with the skill level required to work that drink station. But you know what's going to happen? The employers, the big corporations, they're going to come up with more automated ways to bypass human interaction. Well, So now we're going to, we're going to go from machines that, you know, like at McDonald's that, that pour the exact amount into the drink cup and move it along the assembly line right. to you're, you're going to have no cashiers. It's going to be an automated pay station at the front counter and your food's going to come out on an assembly belt. Because so remember, they're, gonna, they're going to cut remember, more people you know, and have more machines. You're absolutely right. And, and the, the, what I was getting at and, and I'm glad you mentioned that because it brings up another point. Oh goodness! Well, what's the what's the the goal of a business? It's to make the owner money. Right. Make, it's to not. Make, it's to make money. It's to make the to owner make, money. Right. To make, to make the yeah, it, to make the owner the, money. Make money. It's no. It's to make the owner money. Right. That's the purpose. It's not of a business. non-for-profit business. It's a profit. And and business. the goal is not to employ people. If I could bring home a million dollars a year as a sole proprietorship and running well, myself, yeah, I, I would you, do it. You would do it. I mean, why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't See you, I? Billy. And instead of having ten employees with ten headaches, you got no headache. You know, you got yourself to worry about, and you can make bring home the same money or whatever. But so that's the point. Businesses are in business to make money. Exactly. And if they can find a way to to cut expenses, which gives them more money, they will. But there's a get rid of the splatter asses. Yeah, but there's a unintended unintended consequence. Another. Unintended consequences to raise your minimum, Get minimum out wage. Of here. <clears throat> if an employer's payroll does go up, who do they pass along that expense to? Well, to the end user, the customer. To the customer. And that the means your Big Mac is no longer no more dollar specials on the Big Mac. Now it's a dollar thirty, so it's, you know, or, or five thirty, whatever it's going to be. Good example. Everybody touts New Zealand. Oh, they've got minimum fifteen dollar minimum wage. You know what a hamburger costs in New Zealand? Fifteen dollars. Wow! It's directly your your hamburger. What's it taste like? I don't know. It, it, probably the same <laughs> as our two dollar hamburger. But your is that with cheese? Your I don't know. <laughs> your cost of food <laughs> is directly proportional to what your what you have to pay your employees. But you can't tell these libertards, these zombies, that they, they all they care about is human rights and give them more money and they, they, how can you expect them to live on minimum wage? Minimum wage wasn't designed for people to 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 to, to live on. It was a, a starter job. Right. It's a kid in high school. Yes. The kid going to, to college that or a, that reti- has or three a retiree jobs. who's or a retiree already who's already got an, a pension to subsidize his income. Minimum or to keep wage, him busy. Exactly. Minimum wage jobs weren't intended to live on. You need to get skills. No skills means no pay. So when you got no skills, you get no pay. When you got mad skills, like some of us in this room might have, then you get mad pay. So, you know, raising the minimum wage is not the solution. By the way, thanks for recognizing my skills. I appreciate that. <laughs> I was talking about myself. I just don't oh, want to toot my own horn. I whoop, got you. Whoop. But, uh, or as my friends say, whoop, 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 whoop. But, uh, yeah, raising the minimum wage is not the solution. No. no. It's absolutely not. Um, it's another are... feel-good law. Another feel. Well, let's raise the minimum wage, just like with all these other feel-good laws. Let's raise the minimum wage, help out the poor blue-collar worker that can't get by. 
It's, it's not the blue collar worker that's not. making minimum wage. No, it's not. It's that, the that's kid. that's his son. Yeah, but that's the story. Know? This that's the spin that Democrats and Obama's using, right. to try to get this passed and ram down our throats and it, again. And here's the thing: I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. You're sorry, not you, the listener, <laughs> the person that's. If you're 30 years old and making minimum wage, that's your problem. You should have done something more with your life than just now figuring out how to work the drink station at McDonald's. Okay. Well, that's going to be automated pretty soon. They won't need you to work the drink station. Well, but that's my point. Exactly. You already had 30 years to figure out what you wanted to do. If you keep bouncing from job to job and, and continuing to start over at, at, a, at a McDonald's, that's not my problem. Now, if you've lost your job to Obamacare, then maybe you should vote Republican next time. Right. And peel not that, my problem. And peel that stupid Obama Biden sticker off your bumper. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um you said something earlier, though. So I the, said a lot. Yeah, you always do. <laughs> you so, should hear my five-year-old man; he never shuts up. So it's so the lip. <laughs> so the so this is the it's the liberals' wet dream to have this minimum wage and free health care that's not free. But it's funny yeah, when universal bathrooms. Well, it's it's funny though when that stuff happens when they get their Obamacare, then they get their minimum wage increase, and then you see the look on their face when they realize. It didn't help anything. Exactly. It like, didn't help like the them. caller last week from Naples that called in and complained about his new health care premiums after voting not once, but twice for Obama. And now this caller is complaining about their medical coverage going skyrocketing. When they caused it because they voted for it. But think of it this Karma. way. Karma. Say, say you're the 15 or $18 an hour guy. You're Just because minimum wage gets raised doesn't mean your pay gets raised. No, just the guy that's starting out, his pay goes up, and because his pay goes up, your hamburger is going to cost more. You still make the same because you didn't make seven bucks an hour. You made eighteen, but now your hamburger is going to go from three bucks to five bucks. You didn't get a raise, other than possibly your yearly or every couple of year raise or whatever that the company can afford right now. So you're it's another penalty to the blue collar worker. Who's making eighteen bucks an hour? Now he's got to pay more for his hamburger, for now his milk, more. Exactly. for his gas, exactly. for everything. Because they don't, the, yeah, minimum the liberals wage. don't care about that. It's all about you know income redistribution. Well, you know they fight for all these these things that they think are rights. They fight for all this crap. Let's, for example, the the liberal media. Okay, liberal media loves this guy they love the left they love the democrats but what is, what's happened in countries that went from freedom to socialism or communism what happened to the newspaper over there there, there is no newspaper what happened to the to the you know to the actual media in their country do they get to print stories they want to print nope they are told what to print exactly which may not be too far off from what they're actually doing here now because obama's telling them what to print but for the folks that are going into media that want to have real stories, they won't have that luxury. And they're going to get to that point where they're going to wake up one day and they're going to go, well, dang it, we've been, we've been fighting for this all this time. We didn't realize we were going to u- lose our rights to print our, the media we wanted to print. Well, that's the failed argument with, with liberals. They don't realize the damage that they're doing not only to society and to the you know Americans in general, but the damage they're doing to themselves. They, they don't, they're, they're seeing... The, the, they're seeing the tree in the forest and not the forest. And when, it, when the forest finally hits them, it's going to smack them right in the face, and they're not going to they're not going to know what to do. Right. I mean, because there's not going to be any more freedoms. You know, once you know, they always say freedom is only a generation away from being lost. Right. And I think we're in that generation where it's it's coming up really fast. I mean, we've got. I don't. So much I don't think on. it's more than one generation away from uh, us. I, I, think I think it's, it's this generation. I think it's this generation. I mean, there's too many too many precursors, too many signs, and the people that aren't paying attention that are that are all like ostriches with their heads in the sand. I feel for you, man, because I know I'm prepared, and the rest of you that aren't prepared, don't come knocking on my door because you're not welcome. So, I mean, like, like you said, it, you were in the generation. There's too much going on right now with yeah. our First Amendment, Second Amendment, Fourth Amendment, you know, and everything else going on with society right now with the dollar, with gold, uh, asteroids flying by the earth. I mean, you name it. There's too much going on right now for us to sit back and say, everything's fine. Right. The ones that are ignoring it, you know. 
Well, let's 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 get into more of that after this break. We got a hard break coming up right now. Um, you know, when we get back, I've got a little bit more on that liberal media deal. Um, and then there's a few other stories we can touch on uh, for the last segment. But this is the Les Radio Show, and we'll be back in just a few. Feeling my way through the darkness, guided by a beating heart. I can't tell where the journey will end, but I know where to start. They tell me I'm too young to understand. They say I'm caught up in a dream Well life will pass me by if I don't open up my eyes So that's fine by me So wake me up when it's all over When I'm wiser and I'm older All this time I was finding myself in love If you want to talk to the hosts, then you have to call in 239-689-8674. I was checking the uh, specs on the end line for the rotary girder. I'm retarded. And now back to the Ledge Radio Show. Welcome back. 239-689-8674. You can email me, JD at the show.com Check us out on iTunes and our YouTube channel. All right, so Paul, uh, before we went to break, we were talking about... Uh, Basically, how the liberals they 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 campaign for all these policies, all these changes, because it's all feel good legislation, like you were saying. But then it gets here. 
And then they realize, oh, crap, what do we do? And then the reality hits them. And, and then it's it too late. Po- it's too late. It's you too can't late. change it. You can't change it. Just like in England, you know, when they they all, all those school shootings, you got to give up your guns. You got to give up your, all these kids are getting shot in school and they all gave up their guns. And now if you read the polls, you know, over in England, they all want their guns back. It's too late. Well, because what up. happens over there is you get gangs of youth walking down the street, kicking in someone's front door. They're not worried about anything There's because no gun. all nothing. the guns have been confiscated from the law-abiding citizen, and you know they're they're kicking in the front door, beating the crap out of the family, stealing whatever they want, and just walk right to the next house because the cops don't. You know, you got to get to the special police to have the guns over there. I know, it sounds like a night at Walmart in Lehigh, <laughs> in Lehigh Hood, or North Fort Myers. Close true, you, true. Close to you? No, no. I'm in, I'm in Cape. I'm in the Cape Hood. Yeah. I'm in a nice hood. Oh, now it's nice. No, it, it's, you, you, it's you spend, nicer than Lehigh. You spend all day long on Facebook down in the Cape, but it's good. I down Cape for the regulations. <clears throat> hey, look, if we could send Section Eight out to the out to the Cape, we would. Oh, and trust me, they probably will eventually. Who's your? You guys have? Do you guys have a county rep out there? A county commissioner for the Cape, or do they? Or does? Oh the yeah, county... there's a county commissioner. I don't know who mine is. I mean. Because, I mean, you guys have city council, but do you also have county representation? Yeah, yeah county commissioners, they represent different parts of the county. If, if we look it up, we'll see who covers it. Hmm. You know, well, thanks it might to, be Timmy Hall. Thanks to, <laughs> th- <laughs> thanks, to, thanks to Frank Mann. You know, I've got uh, Section 8 out in Lehigh now. When they knocked down all the projects on Michigan, they sent them all out to Lehigh. I'm sure Frank thanks Mann got greased on that one. I'm sure he got a little thank you handshake. Well, th- this, is, this, is, this is what you get from, this, from the liberal media. Okay. The media, they've been for this guy since the beginning. They've been pulling for him since since 07, since before he got into office. You know, they were for Hillary. They were for Obama. God, they definitely weren't for any conservative or any, or any, not that we even had a conservative running in 08, but, you know, we had Republicans uh, running, maybe not conservative Republicans. But this is, this is one of the quotes from the L.A. Times. Although the administration may have the right motives, really, do you think so? They really have the right motives? It's aggressive use of executive power to change deadlines and weaken requirements sets an unwelcome precedent. I think what they're meaning there is, hey, you know what's going to happen when a Republican gets in office? Now he can use the you know, executive action like this president's been doing. And God knows what the Republicans are going to do to us. But it goes on to say, it also risks subverting some of the goals of the law, talking about Obamacare, the president is trying to protect. Because, as you know, the, the president is unilaterally, single-handedly changing the laws to Obamacare as he goes along. As he goes, without Congress approval. Without congressional approval, which is against the law and is an impeachable de- uh, offense, and yet no one's bringing him up on charges. Nope. I, I, and as I told you before, and I'm going to say it again and on the record, the reason why nobody's bringing it up is because Obama controls the NSA, and the NSA has got dirt on every single one of them, and none of them want to speak out. because Probably, because probably they, they'd dirt. rather just keep their job. Right, he's got dirt on every one of them, especially Boehner, that turncoat Boehner. He's got dirt on every one of them. You know, so I, should, I should delete my picture of me and him. Yeah, I, dude, I would, man. I wouldn't want to be seen with, with Boehner or any of them. <laughs> it's funny. I've got it's a Boehner, and, Boehner on one side and Trey on the other. But, yeah, but you remember when Boehner came to town, I told you I want to be nowhere near that guy. Right. You know, so, you know, without, you know, putting down my buddy Trey, you know, I want him nowhere near Boehner because he's, he's a sellout, man. He's Absolutely. establishment GOP, and he's everything that's wrong with this country. Well, you know, the, the, the uh, LA Times goes on to say, rather than changing the mandate by fiat, President Obama should have asked Congress to fix the provision. And then they go on. On the other hand, the Republicans who control the House have shown no interest in improving the law. They just want to kill it. So it's hard to fault Obama for not engaging in a fool's errand. Well, the Republicans don't want to change little pieces of this law. They want to get rid of it because they know it's wrong. It's bad for the country in all aspects. It was sold to the American people as free health care. It's only it's free. Not free. It's, it's, al- it's only free to the people who already don't pay for health care. Everyone else has to pick up the tab for those few that already take advantage of the right. system. Right, and, and the way it was designed was that all these young people were going to flock to it and sign up for it and pay these premiums, which is going to pay for everybody else. And all the young people aren't flocking to it, and they're not signing up for it. Well, and you're absolutely right. Um, and they go on to say, and 
And with congressional Republicans cheering for the law to fail, which I am, uh, rather than trying to ensure its success, what what about Obamacare is successful or what about it would I want to be successful? Nothing. But they go on to say the administration doesn't have a lot of good options for solving the implementation problems that it's encountered. Still, it would be easier to defend its actions in referring to the president and how he's made these unilateral changes had it at least made an effort to work with Congress on the necessary fixes. And if it has to resort to bending, here they go, bending deadlines and mandates, it should do so in a way that doesn't undermine the law's goals. So even though they're taking a swipe at him, they're still defending him. Well, what we need to do, the, the health care bill is going to fail based on the amount of jobs that they've already predicted are going to be lost. And uh, as you stated earlier, and I, I want to reiterate, uh, Rand Paul saying that, you know, we're going to end up staying Democrat from here on forward. And that's true because right now Obama's in control. The Democratic Party's in control. And every election from here on out, they're going to have the upper hand. They've got control of the voting booths. They've got control of of of, uh, of the laws. And everything's going to go their way. And that's right. why we're predicting that there may not ever be another Republican in charge again. Well, speaking of Rand and, and mentioning that as a – uh, general overview for the country. He also, you know, now we, you and I, and and most people on the right, see Texas as kind of a shining light uh, for conservatives, in the way that the state is ran, um, government wise, that it's got fewer regulations like Florida does. So it's it's got you've got more opportunity over there, no state income tax. You got more opportunity for business, for growth, um, to keep more of the money you earn, but. Rand Paul, coming from uh, uh, truthrevolt.org, um, speaking over the weekend, stated that if the Republican Party did not embrace some form, some form of immigration reform, the state of Texas would be blue within the decade. Now, immigration reform, he's not saying amnesty at any, any, on any level. But we already know, and what he's referring to, he's saying, the immigration policy is flawed. It's terrible. It takes forever to become a citizen. So, yes, that needs to be reformed. But talking about the, decre- the decreasing demographic base of the GOP, in an event in Texas, Paul stated, Texas is going to be a Democrat state within 10 years if we don't change. That means we evolve. doesn't mean we give up on what we believe in, but it means we have to be a welcoming party. And he says, what I'll continue to say, and if it's not an exact policy prescription, but if you want to work and you want a job and you want to be part of America, we'll find a place for you. Now, I see where he's going with that. And we still welcome people from other countries here. Of course. That's how this country started, was people coming here from somewhere else. But come here illegally. And if if the system we have in place now doesn't work, We've got to fix that. Right. And I get I get arguments with people daily, including, you know, well known friends of mine that work in the media that, you know, leave the leave the Hispanics alone, leave the illegals alone. And I'm sorry, I don't agree. I mean, how about tell you what? Tell you what, how about I come to your house, I crash in your couch for the rest of my life, and you can't do anything about it. You okay with that? You you're down with that? You're all right? And you're gonna feed me and you're gonna clothe me. You're going to give me a vehicle, you're going to give me a cell phone, and you're going to pay for all this. And you're good with that, right? You're down with that? Oh, absolutely. Of course. I'm with it. Of course. But I'm supposed to sit back and say, okay, millions of illegal immigrants, whether they're from Canada or Mexico or Ethiopia Pakistan. or Pakistan or New York, wherever these illegals are coming from, <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be okay with them just... You know, coming in and, and taking we, and, all the free benefits and all the benefits that and are then, only they're free to them, but they're not they're free to us. Cause and we then all the jobs them. too, because we have 92 million Americans without jobs, and you're saying they don't want to work. Tell you what, cut their government welfare off, get rid of all the illegal aliens, and then trust me, those people yeah. that don't have the government benefits are going to flock to those eight, nine, ten dollar an hour jobs picking vegetables in the field because they want to feed their family. Right. And we're, this We have a, a, a mattress society where we're making everybody feel comfortable you know, with government benefits. I and like that. I like mattress, mattress society. society. 
I don't know who said it. I heard it once before, but I think it might have been Mark Levin. You but see, I think it's a prostitute. It might be. Yeah, it could have been. It could have been. But uh, anyway, no, no you, tripod. No one tripod. But uh, you know, it's en- enough is enough. I mean, we need people coming into this country that that not only have skills but have something to offer for society. We can't just keep having a million people with zero to offer. And then there's another two million trying to come from Germany and other countries that want to be residents that are being told nope. Yeah. But yet we're given everything. They, and these people are educated. Educated. They have they're money. They have homes. They're doctors. Yeah. Exactly. And they're being told no. And you have to go back home. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it makes no sense. You stop well, arguing well, well, for it. Actually, it. Well, we can't deport a million people. It, Why not? It might make perfect sense. If it's being done on purpose, well, it's being done on purpose because the it's edu- only explanation. Because the educated that are coming from these countries that have something to offer, they vote conservative and they vote Republican. That's what I'm saying. So you, you the, let the all these dumb people- down people that want free benefits are going to vote for their paycheck. They're going to vote Democrat because Democrats are promising them a paycheck. And in some states like Massachusetts, not to harp on them anymore, but we will. <laughs> Their unemployment, the max is seven fifty a week. Seven fifty a week. Seven fifty for unemployment. I had a guy come to me and, wow. and do a job interview with me, and he said, "I'll only work for you if you can beat my unemployment." <laughs> and he, I said, "Well, what's your unemployment?" Just humoring him because at that statement alone, he was already not getting the job. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't hire someone. No, I didn't tell either. him that because I wanted to be able to, to demean him in, in, you know, in person <laughs> right then in front of him. And he says, "Oh, it's seven fifty a week." Hope the labor board's not listening. I don't give a crap. <laughs> I told him to get out and you know stay out, never come back. You well, that's that's what crap. society's doing right now under Obama is they're making it more comfortable not to work. I know. And they're making a joke out of the fact that people are going from full full time to part time. Nancy Pelosi saying, "Well, now you got time to pursue your dreams." <laughs> what? You just got fired. What? So now you've got time to look. Okay, you went from forty hours a week to eighteen hours a week. Now go pursue your dream. Yeah. Well, my dream was to own a bigger home, a nicer car, put. My kids through college, has some retirement my money, travel. Now you I've can't got, do that I've at 18 work, hours a now week. I've got to work three jobs, making 10, 10 an hour, hopefully. Yeah, 10, 10 an hour. I'm with you. Well, now, go ahead. I tell you what. I know this was a I, – I want to change gears for the, for the last part of the show. Beep, beep, beep. Back up a little bit. From Infowars.com, Alex Jones. Storyline, U.S. Army builds fake city in Virginia to practice military occupation of this country. Oh, it's just, you know, simple training. I I talked to a friend of mine earlier this week about this, and he didn't seem to have any interest in it. He didn't think it was a big deal. And it's like, really? Really? I mean, I guess a lot of people that are... You know, on our side, seem to think that the reason why the government's doing this is because they want to stop scaring people in the big major cities when they have Black Hawk helicopters flying through the city practicing. Practicing for what? For what? There shouldn't be any practicing for anything. I if mean, we, should, if we always bring the war to the other country, why we'll are we practicing war in we'll our own country? We'll never have to have war in this country. Right. So the reason why they're doing this. Because they know that there will that martial law is coming. Right. If they can collapse the economy, if they can make the American people fl- flip out, then Obama can can declare martial law and become president indefinitely. Possibly. Ugh. I'm not. I'm not even going that. I'm not even going that far. All I'm saying is, if he can declare martial law, then he can use the military at his discretion. Yeah, I, I just don't use, think and, the military is going to go along and with the them. military is only trained for one thing, to kill. They're not trained to be policemen of American citizens. That's what, that's well, we can what only hope that the military will kill the right people. Yeah. Yeah. But unfortunately, we all look alike. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like us going over to Afghanistan and trying to selectively fire on only the terrorists when they all look the same, and pretty much they all hate us the same. Okay. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of hoping the military goes after the, the people, people of power, that yeah, the people that are cre- creating this situation, and puts them in the gulags or well, hangs them high for for treason, like our founding fathers would be doing right now. I mean, 
I can't believe the American people are sitting back. I mean, somebody's got to be the they're first sheep. one. To, they're sheep. They have no idea what's going on. No, there's so no such thing about, as a three percenter. They're, I mean, so, they're so worried about Britney Spears or Miley Cyrus or whatever. They don't know anything. Marijuana laws. Yeah, all the stupid crap that, that is going – all the celebrity bull crap that's not going to help them ever in their life. Nope. But this – Honey boo boo. This has a <laughs> major impact. Oh, yeah. Because this can end the, end their life. As some of my acquaintances and friends say, well, I don't vote. Why, <laughs> why bother? Uh, guess what? You're the problem. You are the problem. It's not me, you know, being unaccepting of the lesbian, gay, transgender, bisexual. I'm a man. I'm Trans-am. a fly. I'm a I'm a pig this week. Whatever it is, it's not me that's the problem. It's you that are the problem. The people that don't vote, that don't care, that don't want to see. All they see is what's right in front of them. Yeah. My paycheck. My dinner. Miley you know, Cyrus. Yeah, Miley Cyrus and her foam finger. Those people are what's wrong with society. Well, and they just don't see it. They don't see it. They won't see it. when it's all said and done. They're all going to be heading for those FEMA internment camps that we argued about last week. That are all over the country. You know that's where they're going to be going. And I hope they enjoy their stay. You know, and you get callers from time to time that call the show that that want more information. And you know, I'd love to give them as much information as I could. But it's out there. It's it's nobody it's wants easy. to look. They don't believe it. They read the story. And they're like, oh, this can't be true. Right. You know, and all I can do is base it on. You know what I can research, and and, and don't use Snopes dot com or, yeah. or Washington Post or Huffington Post or Media Matters, George Soros. Right, most of the reliable information that's out there, JD, is small, you know, independent journalists. They're the ones that are really telling the truth about what's going on in this country right now. Well, just like in foreign countries that are ruled by dictators, it's the small independent journalists that are really getting the truth out there. Yeah, those are the ones that sneak it out. Well, they know, exactly. Their lives are in danger. And we got ones here in our country that are their lives. Are, look at that one reporter that died in that fiery car crash, where his car magically went super fast all of a sudden and crashed into a tree, and the engine went two miles away. Right. Right. Yeah, that wasn't a bomb. Yeah, yeah. that wasn't a bomb. No, of course not. BMW. Yeah, and he was getting ready to break break open a big story about the government. Yep. Yeah. That so, is true. That is true. That's just like, coincidence, though. You know, the, what's weird about this particular deal, and, and, and it's amazing that your your buddy you're talking about didn't think this was an interesting story or, or yeah. there was nothing to it, but they, they've built this 300-acre facility. It includes a sports stadium, a bank, school. Subway. An underground subway to train for unspecified future combat scenarios. Well, <laughs> hmm. In uh, s- combat scenarios in America, who are you? Who are you fighting against? Who is it that they think they're going to be? I think the combating? Canadians are going to take over. I think yeah. the Canadians they're going to cross the border, you know, with Rob Ford in the lead, and they're going to just, you know, they're they're cracking down, man. They've they've had enough, and they're tired of all the Canadian jokes, and uh, <laughs> they're coming to take over. <laughs> oh, at least hey, you know what? At least the site includes a mosque. Really. Nice. Yeah, but the sign, you know, but it, the town, you know, looks American in every other way, other than the one mosque. Well, I got a Korean. You know right? what the, you know what the I put a the- Korean right by, by my toilet, and every day I rip a page out, and I'm not using it to read. Um, I bet you though, this mosque, that'll be what they'll defend from. Right. They'll be defending the mosque, <sighs> but they'll be destroying everything. You're making else. me sick, man. You're I, making me sick. I'm just telling you what it says. I mean, mm, the subway carriages even carry the same logo. As the carriages in D.C., which could suggest that the site was built to double both as a foreign city or a mock domestic town. Hmm. According to Colonel John P. Pet- Petkosik. He butchered that. Yeah. Petkosik? <laughs> Pet- I don't know, whatever. I feel sorry for that guy. Right in, complain, send hey, an email. If, if I was him, I'd have, I'd have beat my parents up for that name. This is the place where we can be creative, where we can come up with solutions for problems that we don't even know we have yet. Yeah, I, <laughs> this is where we'll look at solutions for the future, material solutions and non-material solutions, anything from how you're going to operate in a subterranean environment to how you dismount a Humvee to avoid an IED strike. But at what point will you ever have to do it on American soil? 
unless you're fighting Americans. Right, and when they declare martial law, when the dollar fails, when 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 gold goes belly up, when the stock market stock stock market crashes, you know, whatever it is, that's what's going to happen. That's what they're they're planning for that. I mean, mean, as they as, know something that that's why the DEA, that's why the Department of Education has bought all the weapons and, and ammunition. Post, the, postal Service, Postal Service, Homeland, I mean, Security. Homeland Security. Every branch of the government is buying weapons and ammunition, and, and we've and, never seen this ever, ever. Not under Bush, not under Clinton, not under Reagan, not under anybody, Carter, not under anybody. Nixon, not under anybody but Obama. Has all these branches of the United States government been buying so many millions? of of rounds, not a couple boxes of ammo, millions of rounds, grenade launchers, grenades, automatic weapons, handguns, and nobody in America is saying anything. And now we find out about this mock city that's for training purposes. Well, I tell you what, this is this is scary because this will involve us. The increasing demonization of domestic political groups. Domestic political groups. Like three percenters Tea and Party, Mulan Lobs, yep. Okay, as extreme, it has prompted numerous scenarios where commentators have suggested that U.S. Army and National Guard personnel could be needed to quell civil unrest. And then in 2012, an academic study about the future use of the military as a peacekeeping force within the U.S., written by a retired Army colonel, depicted a shocking scenario in which the U.S. Army is used to restore order to a town that's been seized by Tea Party insurrectionists tea party you know it's funny they label tea party like they're the bad guys they're the ones that liberated this country from england the tea party that's where it came from we dumped the tea over in in the uh in the channel you know to to show our 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 dislike of the excess taxes from england yet they're going to call tea party insurrectionists the study dovetailed with a leaked U.S. Army manual, which revealed plans for the military to carry out civil disturbance operations during which troops would be used domestically to quell riots, confiscate firearms, and even kill Americans on U.S. soil during mass civil unrest. The manual also describes how prisoners will be processed through temporary internment camps under the guidance of U.S. Army FM 3-19.40 internment slash resettlement operations, which outlines how internees would be, quote, re-educated into developing an appreciation of U.S. policies while detained in prison camps in the United States. This was in an Army manual talking about re-educating American citizens who don't share the same philosophy of the current administration. Can you imagine? Oh, yeah, and look at the other story I was talking about earlier about that ex-Navy SEAL, uh, Ben Smith, who just dropped that bombshell on Fox News saying the government is, you know, practicing for martial law. I mean, you got a Navy SEAL that's out there publicly saying it. I mean, I, why I, would he be publicly saying it? I mean, you know you become an instant target with the, with the government – when you go out and say something like that. Fort Hood soldiers are being taught by their superiors that Christians, Tea Party supporters, and anti... Now, they call it anti-abortion activists. I call it people that are for babies. Yeah. The lives of babies. Yeah. Anti-murderers. Anti-murderers <laughs> represent a radical terror threat. So now Christians... And people who support the Constitution, Constitution. and we're, people we're who now, are, we're now the terrorists. and people who are against baby murderers are radical terror threats, mirroring rhetoric backed by the Department of Homeland Security, which frames quote liberty lovers as domestic extremists. Do you realize everything you just said doesn't sound like you live in the United States? It sounds like you live in North Korea. Yes, the way you're quoting it, it doesn't sound like we live in the United States. I know. That's what it sounds like. That's what it sounds like. This is just... When in American history has never, this ever, never, never, ever, never, ever, ever, ever happened? Never. And nobody's saying everybody's going about their business because they want to know if Kane, Kane West or whatever is going to have another baby, what he's going to name it. I mean, nobody cares. 
Nobody nobody cares until it directly affects you, them. You remember the movie Red Dawn, Patrick yep. Swayze? Yep. Remember the the beginning of the movie after the Russians and the Cubans landed, and they bring the uh, all of the 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 adult males from the uh, from the town into the the prison that they built. Yep. Maybe the high school gym yard or whatever it right, was. Right, I remember. And they were playing propaganda on the movie screen to re-educate right. the township into communism and believing in the Russian theology uh, uh, theory. That's what they're talking about here. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. I mean, I I wasn't joking when I talked about all those FEMA camps last yeah. week. People, do your homework, be yeah. prepared, be educated. I mean, you don't have to wear a tinfoil hat, man. This is all this is all fact. It's all out there for you to discover. If you wait till it's too it late. Happens. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late. Grocery store is empty in one day. Yep. Stock up on your ammo. You know, go to not places. Buy like, it cheap, stack it deep. Yeah, NatchezSS.com <laughs> to get your ammo. AmmoMan.com also has great deals. Stack it deep. Stack it deep. Buy it cheap. I'm with it. All right, well, it's been a good show. Appreciate you joining me today, Milton Paul. Anytime, my Thanks friend. Thanks to uh, Tripod Bill. Thanks to our lovely call screener, Miss Chelsea, out in, the, out in the heat out there. Uh, we'll be back next week, same time, same day, Tuesday, 6 p.m. This is the Ledge Radio Show with J.D. and Milton Paul signing off. Do you know if your fire alarm company will be there when you need them most? You've reached MIA Fire. We service fire alarms, clean shirts, and wash cars. If this is an emergency, press 1, and you'll be placed on indefinite hold. To leave a message for a manager who will never call back, press 2. To complain about your bill, ask for Peggy. Thank you. Goodbye. Don't let this happen to you. I'm Jeremy Johnson, owner of Imperial Fire Alarm and Security. We pride ourselves on honest pricing and personal hometown service, the way it should be. When you call us, you'll speak to me or one of my technicians, but you'll never be routed to another state or country for that matter. Imperial Fire Alarm and Security provides wireless fire alarm monitoring, annual inspections, and service. Call now for a free quote and let us earn your business. Secure your world. Call Imperial Fire Alarm and Security at 239-288-6482 or visit imperialfiresecurity.com. License number EF20000446.